What's up, my name is Joe Reeves. I'm a Grammy nominated producer from London. And today I'm gonna to be talking about finding new chords just by adding your little finger to your basic shapes. I don't really have much of a background in music theory. So when I first started playing guitar, hearing chord names like augmented or add nine or even major seven used to really put me off. I used to look up the tabs of these chords and it'd just be a cluster of dots. I'd try and bend my fingers and it didn't work basically. And it was too complicated and it put me off for a long time. But what I realise now is that you can create some of these chords just by adding your little finger to your basic chord shapes. Let's start with our basic chord shapes in first position. We've got C, A, G, E, and D. Now if you notice, the way I've played all of those chords, I'm not using my little finger. And that's the way that they're typically going to be fretted. That leaves our little finger free to add notes to these chords, to change the way they sound, and to change their feel. Let's start with C. If we add our little finger to the third fret of the D string, we get a chord that sounds like this. And we're still fretting C chord the same way we were before. All we've done is just move our little finger over and it's now fretting the third fret of the D string. And it creates this beautiful, complicated sounding chord that's called C sus4. Now we move our little finger up one string to play the third fret of the G string, we end up with a chord called C7. This chord sounds completely different to the C sus4, it's a lot more dissonant, and all we've done is just move our little finger up a string. Now we move our little finger up a string again, so we're playing the third fret of the B string, we end up with C add 9. We can even move our little finger up one more string again, which is just a C chord with an added G on top, which makes it sound a little bit more full. So there we go again, we've got C, C sus4, C7, C at 9, and C. The A chord, same thing. Add our little finger to the third fret of the B string. We end up with A sus4. Add our little finger to the second fret of the high E, and we've got A6. Move our little finger up one again to the third fret of the E string and we've got A7. So there we go again, we've got A, A sus4, A6, A7. And we haven't moved our original shape, all we're doing is just adding our little finger. Okay, so for E, we add our little finger to the second fret of the G string. It's an E sus4. We add our little finger to the second fret of the B string. We've got E add 6, move it up a fret to the 3rd fret of the B string. We've got E7, move it up a string and down a fret to the 2nd fret of the high E, we've got E add 9. Which is just such a beautiful chord. D is a little bit more limiting just because of the way it's fretted, it's already using the higher strings. Um, but what we can do, add our little finger to the 3rd fret of the E string to get that D sus4 sound. What we can do is a little bit more complicated, so don't worry if your fingers can't stretch, is use your little finger on the fourth fret of the D string. And that creates a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. It just changes the way it sounds slightly. G is a little bit more complicated and a lot of people tend to use their little finger to fret that high G. But we could switch out our little finger for our fourth finger. Have our little finger come and play the fourth fret of the B string and we end up with this G augmented chord. So those are some of the ways we can create new, interesting sounding chords from our first position basic chords, all just from adding our little finger and not changing the way they're originally fretted. The same thing can be applied to bar chords, because if you think about it, a bar chord is just an E shape moved up or an A shape moved up the neck. The difference here is that we're using our little finger to fret these chords, but our little finger can move around and our other fingers can stay where they are to create new chord sounds. Let's move our little finger up a string. Let's move it up a string again. Let's move it up a fret. Let's move it up a string and down a fret. And we can do the same thing with bar chords starting on the A string. Move our little finger up one our little finger up a string and down a fret, move it up one fret again, and we end up with all these interesting sounding chords.
Now the thing about this technique is that you can use it to create movement within chords. You can use it to create tension. Some of them are going to sound prettier than others. But I guarantee all of them will have a use. And before you know it, you'll be playing all these complicated, jazzy sounding chords without even realising it. My name is Joe Reeves and this has been my Technique of the Week for Fender.